In this video, we consider a disc, a horizontal merry-go-round, uh, mass of 120 kilograms, radius of 2.8 meters, and at the start of a time interval, the merry-go-round is spinning with an angular speed of 0.7 radians per second. There's friction in the axle, so the merry-go-round slows down to 0.2 radians per second after 12 seconds. We desire it to get back up to speed, so when it gets down to 0.2 radians per second, a person starts pushing uh, 55 newtons of force at the edge of the merry-go-round and keeps that force perpendicular to the uh, radius, perpendicular to the radius, um, tangent to the, the disk. We want to determine how much time elapses until we're back at 0.7 radians per second. So we want to know time. We've got information in this problem about uh, radians per second. We're going from 0.2 up to 0.7. So as we consider what uh, equation might be helpful, um, we know the desired final radians per second, 0.7. We know where we're starting from, 0.2. We want to know time. Well, we need to do some calculations to determine the angular acceleration. Well, we were given some uh, information about the disk, the merry-go-round. Uh, we were given its mass and its radius, so we're able to calculate the moment of inertia. If we could find the torque, if we could come up with that torque net, um, that would be helpful to come up with alpha. Well, the torque net is the torque that the person creates minus the torque due to friction. Friction is trying to slow us down as this person tries to build up the angular speed. Then the torque of friction, how do we come up with a number here? The torque of the person, that's not going to be difficult. Torque is force times lever arm. So it's going to be the 55 newtons and the uh, 2.8 meters uh, for the torque. Torque is force times lever arm. To come up with the torque for friction, we're not told the dimensions of the axle or how much frictional force is there. Is there a way we can produce the torque of friction number? Um, yes, we know I, able to calculate that. Can we get the alpha for the friction? Yes, because the alpha for the friction is uh, for the starting point of this problem, we had a, and I'll scoot up just a little bit here. Uh, for the starting point of this problem, we had a given uh, final angular velocity and an initial angular velocity, and we told it took 12 seconds to uh, come down to that. So let's start doing a few calculations here, putting in some numbers that match, uh, match these equations. So first for the alpha for the friction, we ended up at 0.2 radians per second and our initial angular velocity, angular speed was 0.7 and this change occurred in 12 seconds. So you ought to ch double check this with your calculator but we're coming up with an alpha here. It is a negative friction causes us to slow down. So 0.0417 radians per second squared. And we can now calculate the torque of friction. The torque of friction is I times alpha. The I value is a disk, one half the mass, which is 100 and, uh, 120 kilograms. Had to verify that. And our radius is 2.8 meters, that gets squared, so that's our I value, and now put in our uh, alpha, our angular acceleration, minus 0 0.0417 radians per second squared, and the uh, the I value, if you want that separately, I came up with 470.4 kilograms meter squared, but producing here a torque due to friction, a torque due to friction, sorry about that, scoot up just a little bit, 
a torque due to friction, the I times the alpha that we've determined, and I came up with minus 19.62 newton meters. So we've uh, accomplished that part of the calculation. We're, we're doing these calculations, working our way back towards the formula to help us get our final answer. So we have the torque due to friction. Now we need to calculate the net torque. And I'll go ahead and slide up a little bit here. The net torque is the torque due to the person. The torque due to the person is a force of 55 newtons and a lever arm of 2.8 meters, pushing tangentially to the rim of the merry-go-round. We're perpendicular to the radius, perpendicular to the lever arm. So that's the torque due to the person. And we have the torque for friction that subtracts off of here, 19.62 newton meters. And again, multiply here, subtract this number, and we get the net torque. And that net torque, 134.38. I prefer not to round off numbers until the final answer, so I don't create any, uh, introduce any round off error. Not much anyway. So there's our net torque. Now we want to use that net torque and calculate the alpha for the case when the person is pushing. And we now put in 134. We're going to use net torque equals I times alpha. So our net torque, 134.38 newton meters. Our I is the 470.4. We'll just consider the person pushing but not uh, putting any of their mass into the rotation. Uh, this is focusing on just the merry-go-round. And then the alpha for the case when the person is pushing. So we do a division here, of course, and uh, find that the alpha is 0 0.2857 radians per second squared. We want to use that alpha now to calculate the time. We know we're ending at 0.7 radians per second. We're starting with the person pushing at 0.2 radians per second. And we've calculated the alpha, so we'll be able to calculate the time using that, uh, that first equation. So again, if I give you a, a view of this, so we have 0 0.7. That's our final angular speed, radians per second. We started pushing on the merry-go-round had 0 0.2 radians per second. Our alpha value is 0 0.2857 radians per second squared. And we're looking to solve this T. So of course I'm going to subtract the 0.2 first. I have 0.5 that I'll divide by 0.28 five seven and should do this on your own calculator but I came up with a time of 1.75 seconds and that's a little bit reasonable it took the merry-go-round 12 seconds to slow down with just friction we're now putting in more torque than we had for friction so it's reasonable that we get up to uh, 0.7 radians per second and a number smaller than 12 seconds so 1.75 seconds. We're taking advantage of rotational dynamics and rotational kinematics. The kinematics here relating omega and alpha and t. The dynamics, rotational dynamics, how torque creates angular acceleration. Um, so if you need to, uh, I'll replay this a little bit. Uh, but uh, I hope you pick up a sense of how to work this type of problem. If you want to see some other physics problems worked out, there's a list of them, physics.gpclements.com. There's a list of the videos that I have. Uh, there's nothing to buy at this site. It's free. There's You do not register. You don't have to give me your email address. And if you like the videos, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would uh, help a lot. Bye.